Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back to Hearthstone. So you can see here I've been challenged by Loki. He has to challenge a friend for 80. Our daily quest is win 7 games in anything. And Loki was certainly chomping at the bit to challenge me. So he wants a standard game or a wild game. Interesting. Seems like I can do anything I want. So I'm just going to go through all of them. And we'll see what happens here. Hmm. Loki said in, in between the uh, last oh, recording and this one, uh, by the way, it's April 19th, I believe. I must protect for yep. a while. If I didn't say the date. Uh, he said, I'll help you get better. That, that's up to you, though. You got lethal time to go to the casino. Uh... What, the, what does that one mean, Loki? Time to go to the casino. Uh, are you telling me that you have to rush through this game? Or, the or are you being uh, hyperbolic? Hmm. Hello. Uh, My greetings. Uh... Open the way gate. So the thing, the only thing here is normally when I play Loki, I am trying to uh, just let him show off his cards and not let him win if he wants. In this one case, uh, I I kind of need the victories just to save time. Also, it's a little bit different because we still have a little bit of news here that I want to cover uh, and this is going to be a 30 minute recording so we may do some live streaming after that point but it's it's uh, as far as the, oh it's casino mage is the name of his his deck apparently that's an interesting name. I guess that means it has a lot of random things in it. Uh, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater documentary Wanted. has missed Got its Indiegogo it. funding goal, but it's still going forward. Which, frankly, it, from my perspective, the Tony Tony Hawk element uh, as that's fan, that our fans of Tony Hawk just need to let everything go, anyways, uh, because. There's one or two Tony Hawk games that were good. I will fully grant you that. But after that, the others were only okay. And it, the latest Tony Hawk game was just a garbage pile. And the game before that was kind of bad too. Yeah, because it was like this Wii built-in thing with a, a special s skateboard peripheral. It's like there, there hadn't been a good Tony Hawk thing. Also, frankly, Tony Hawk is, uh, uh, is kind of old, and so I, I know he's probably rather well known still in the skating in the world, but in the general kids that like skating, I don't think they're going to be fans of Tony Hawk as much as they might be fans of the whoever the next Tony Hawk is. I, I, I don't know, not being a, a fan of skating that much myself. And, and frankly, I think maybe skating has gotten a little bit more family friendly than it used to be. Uh, I'm still, I'm sure the police still harass skaters a lot for skating in the wrong place and trespassing and assuming that they're, they're holding drugs and such. But I, I think they've they've kind of it kind of mellowed on that more than it used to be where in the old days it, it, it seemed like skaters might be enemy number two on the, the police uh, radar uh, but talking about this Tony Hawk pro skater things the one thing they aren't letting go uh, that was a good transition there uh, is the money that they they made so they're keeping all that money that they got from indiegogo they say they're going to use it to actually continue making the documentary but who knows 
Uh, a side note here. Uh, oh, look, he's got a relatively interesting story. I met Tony Hawk in Florida years back. Cool. Uh, like, I heard a story where uh, Tony Hawk went through the airport recently and uh, somebody looked at his name and, his, and he goes, just like the skater, and he goes, yep. And they go, and then the, the guy checking him, he goes, I wonder what that guy's doing right now. And he goes, this, <laughs> I'm checking in <laughs> at the airport. Uh, yeah. I hear Tony Hawk is a really great guy and he's probably one of the best commercial tie-in persons you could do with until until he as long as no huge scandal comes out about him which I don't think will happen uh, I would certainly see see why you would still want to have him as your sponsor but uh, and I know he's got like all these special skating thing uh, skating practice things in the back of his ranch that I think he lets kids go to so he's probably gonna become like a Bill Gates type person who was really famous for one thing in his youth and now he's probably I wouldn't be surprised if he got into promoting health education throughout the schools and and teaching kids to skate and all that what to do what to do but yeah, I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Tony Hawk, and I imagine that's probably why we haven't seen too many replacements for him. Because I bet a bunch of the other skaters are are, are a little bit more aggressive and abrasive. Uh, moving on, Twitch has confirmed that they're going to have ten dollars and fifteen dollars subscription tiers. Ah, uh, man. Like, I couldn't imagine anybody paying ten or dollars or twenty-five dollars a month to watch all of my content on Twitch. I, I I couldn't imagine people even doing too much of that for like PewDiePie and their their favorite streamers. It it just seems like too much money for for far too many people and it, it feels almost like elitism at that point it's like I'm gonna have my 100 fans that are wa willing to pay $25 a month on this twitch uh, channel where my other million fans uh, I'm thinking like PewDiePie might do something like this and I don't think PewDiePie actually would do that uh, uh, but it it seems too expensive $25 you're talking for that price of $25 you're halfway to a brand new game almost and I think most people would rather you buy a brand new game e even the $5 subscription seems like a lot on Twitch and I don't do anything on Twitch I, I have a channel I just, I've never streamed on it but I have it there just in case I ever do want to uh, join the pack but, like, for the life of me, I couldn't imagine doing that. Uh, if, if I got a go, not a GoFundMe, but what is, what is there, a Patreon, I could, I could think about maybe once I have... A lot of fans getting like maybe a couple hundred dollars a month. I, I was watching somebody's uh, break it down, and they said that like people do Patreons for videos, and they get um, they they have like fifty thousand fans, and they get about two hundred to four hundred dollars on the first video, and then it just goes down and down and down, and you, you you're getting. They were getting like ninety dollars by their their fourth video of the month, uh, and so a ninety dollars for for a, a, an entire week is uh, worth of work. Is what they said they spent on it, 
I could certainly see people not being happy about that. Uh, that being said, per video on YouTube ad revenue, you're not getting anywhere near $90 per video. Uh, am I holding a dragon? Draw all three cards. If you're holding a minion with five or more adapt, we'll do that. And Wind Fury. And what's this? Summon 1-1 one, one Jade. Gain an empty mana crystal. Draw a card. Kill this, do this. In the turn, there we go. Uh, moving on with news here. Uh, there's a new Facebook game initiative that they're going to push to to have more games. That's not good news. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is get game notifications on Facebook again. Uh, Steve Ballmer spends $10 million on USA Facts, for, which is Just USA government spending. Uh, frankly, I don't think you really need to spend $10 million to know that the vast majority of all government spending is on the military. And anything that's really below that amount is, is really just chump change. So, uh, from my perspective, either you're going to be, uh, either you're going to be upset about that or you're going to be happy about that. Uh, the NES Classic has been discontinued worldwide, although there are rumors of a Super NES Classic coming out. Uh, the only thing I could think here is maybe the NES Classic sold the amount they wanted to sell in Japan and they just don't care about Japan. Uh, this will be an interesting move. Uh, like, that that's the only thing I could kind of think. Either that or they just had so many contracts in, in place where they said for this many months your factory is going to make the NES Classic and this many months uh, there's a nice move, the Meteor. Uh, and this many months you're going to make the Super NES Classic and this many months you're going to make like an N64 Classic. I don't think they'd do anything else Classic unless they were trying to in some weird way push people back into a Wii Classic. Like, I guess you could kind of do that but they, they've already tried that. I like... Uh, I'm gonna take the victory here if I can. Because I need the victories. And we got to watch and learn. And I guess Cambat uh, either hasn't sent me a friend request. Let's just double check here. What is this? What does this button do? I don't even know what that symbol is. Is that a boot? Fireside gathering. Get together and play Hearthstone with others at an event near you. Beta. Uh, Hearthstone will have access to your location and Wi-Fi networks. Well, that's not going to work with my PC plugged into my house, but... I, so that's, that's new. Um, so yeah, Cambat's not here uh, and he hasn't sent me a friend request or a challenge or anything I assume he could send me a challenge while I'm challenging Loki uh, that that would be a little unfair if that's not the case but I don't know. Uh, there's a new Hot Shots, Goss, Go Hot Shots Golf coming out in August for Japan and PS4 uh, I just right now I think I'm gonna announce all games even if they don't come out for PC now uh, that got me thinking, is there a good golf game for PC? 
Yeah. Lo Loki Cat says if he wants to play me, it's cool. Uh, yeah, he's got a. If he want, if anybody wants to play me, Cam Cat or anybody else, they send me a friend request. I'll check after every game, and uh, we'll. I'll send a challenge to anybody that just instantly sends me a friend request, uh, because Loki and I have played a lot in the past three or four streams. Uh, moving on. NIS America is selling Cardcaptor Sakura Blu-rays. I'm not sure if they're actually the official distributor, but it goes to show that NIS America is more of a Japanese company than an America company, even though they are an America company of a, a wing, because they completely failed to mention the fact that Cardcaptor Sakura is getting a series uh, continuation, a sequel. And, and obviously that's well known as, as there was a beloved cartoon in Japan, so everybody in, in Japan knows that Cardcaptor Sakura is, is coming back. Uh, I don't know if it's particularly going to be that good because they tried to do that with Sailor Moon and it didn't uh, have very good animation quality to it and it was a, kind of a disappointment uh, from what I heard. But the fact that it, it wasn't even mentioned and they're just trying to sell these Blu-rays. And the only reason I even bring this up is NIS of America brings over a lot of Japanese games too. And that's what they mostly do. Uh, but that that's, that's really silly. Uh, speaking of silly things, you can fight the CEO of Square Enix like you can in the Final Fantasy demo. In Neo Automata's DLC, also the new DLC is giving a new outfit to the Let main character in Neo Automata. It's pretty risque of an outfit, but not incredibly risque. It's it's lingerie style clothing without being revealing. So. Uh, if I was going to play Nier Automata, I think I could probably still get it on on YouTube without any do without doing any real censorship. Uh, which I probably do want to play that game at some point. Let's see, can I do this? What was this card? What did this one do? Give a friendly minion 1-1. One, one. Um, can I keep anything alive? Not really. So we'll kill this guy and then play this attack, attack, and attack. Um, so, I did buy Bayonetta, and now it's just a matter of time of finding the right time. Ideally, I would like to play Bayonetta in that Honey Pop time slot, but that Honey T Pop time slot was not supposed to be a, a permanent time slot. So, if I continue down that path, I'm going to spend extra energy recording yet another game when that energy should be better spent uh, it, it should be better spent covering kids games at the beginning of my my block of videos that come out every Monday and Friday like I, sh I want to play this Disney Pirates of the Caribbean game since the Pirates of the Caribbean movie is coming out. I'm not going to do any more Lego things. I saw some Lego on sale and I still kind of want to buy the Lego games, but I'm not going to cover them. I'm not going to play them on PC. It's 100% obvious that they don't care one bit about the PC ports on their, uh, for Lego games. And so I, I don't want to suffer through that. Uh, Now let's make sure I'm getting victories here. 
because that's what we're working towards. Yes, I am getting victories, so that's cool. And nobody's friended me, so I'll just keep playing Loki. Uh, Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap is coming out April 18th. Uh, and then for most things, at PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, and then it's coming out on Steam in a few yeah. weeks. That might be a nice game to play if you're looking for an old school platformer that's been kind of remastered. Uh, the Great Ace Attorney is coming out in Japan on August 3rd uh, for the 3DS. Really just covering all games that are getting announced now. Gravity Rush 2 has a free near uh, costume. Uh, that's probably the most amount of of new news that Gravity Rush 2 has had in a long time. I kind of wanted to play Gravity Rush 2, but it seemed like it it just wasn't that good of a game. So eventually I might get down to it. I'm probably personally going to postpone the creative update for Windows if I can figure out how to do it. I think most people probably should postpone it to the, the most amount because it doesn't seem like they're doing their due diligence there. Uh... I'm just going to end the turn here. Um, and see, that means we only got a couple of things left. The Tiny Build CEO has called on game conferences to help prevent another G2A bullet storm fiasco, which honestly, that's more want? advertisement. Uh, uh, that's more advertisement than bullet storm should get. Uh, so basically what Tiny Build CEO is saying here is that the CEOs of video game companies are so busy that they don't know that GTA has all this uh, controversy around it. And all they saw, see, is that game conferences that the CEOs go to allow GTA to give speeches and have booths in the conferences. And there, therefore... Because G2A at some game conference is next to, say, CD Projekt Red was his example. Uh, they have, G2A has been given credibility by association, which is the dumbest killing. thing in the world. Like, if I personally stand by an honest Abe-like character, am I all of a sudden very honest? I mean, that's literally what he's making as an argument, and it's so dumb. And, uh, and, but that's the argument he's making. And, and it's, it's dumb on another point because the tiny build CEO is saying that CEOs of video game companies are so busy running their business that they can't run their business enough to do research that you would have to do in any kind of business when you're making a contract or deal with any kind of other company like by default if I was the CEO of any company that was any bill big at all I would either personally look into the company that I was going to do or deal with or I would hire any corporate private investigator or just a regular private investigator to find out as much information in the first place the idea that you would go in business and a huge big public uh like uh, get behind me. cooperation with GTA and claim that you've done zero research into the company bolts horribly well. It's really, really dumb. It's really, really bad. It's stupid that the tiny build CEO makes this claim. It's stupid that the CEO of Gearbox or Andy Pitchford claimed to have never heard of GTA uh, when they're making a con... A, a contract with him. It's stupid that he didn't throws his publishing division under the bus and say and and let them either decide uh, whether they want to claim responsibility or not. And I, I didn't see what whether they uh, decided to claim responsibility or what. What? Oh, that was dumb. I took taunt even though I already had taunt. Uh, <laughs> I'll take him out. It's just. 
stupidity upon stupidity upon stupidity, really. And yeah, Bullet Storm is dead. Like, I'll probably get the re re release. Uh, how come I don't use the quest with this deck? Loki is asking. Probably because I don't have the quest. <laughs> Almost certainly. Uh, Loki also mentioned here that he keeps sending me messages and you're not getting them. Haha. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. Like I play on busy. I'm gonna always be on busy. So, like even when I click on you and see them, they're they're not there, Loki. So, just just keep commenting on my uh, thing. Turn busy off low. Uh, but. No, because then, Loki, I get you to comment on my video, and I, I've i gotten notices from YouTube where he says, it says specifically that um, that my comments have gone way up every time I play you. So you're helping my YouTube channel a lot more than if you just commented here. Uh, I think I'm doing a decent enough job, though, re reading what Loki says. Uh, and re responding to it. I, I don't think I've missed any of your, your statements. Uh, finally, we're about done with this recording. And I think uh, this is probably going to be the end of the stream too. So, recently I tried to play the Oddworld series. That really sucked. Four games in Oddworld. And couldn't get a single one of them to make sense to play because Oddworld 1 is this really old platform and it has no checkpoint system and makes you die and it's just way too frustrating I'd never be able to beat it. Oddworld 2 uh, has bugs in it according to the Steam discussion boards and uh, that and thus you can't play Oddworld 2. The remake of Oddworld 1 new and tasty is is, has problems with it and it's not worth playing. Uh, also, and uh, I'm gonna lose. I summoned all these characters and I didn't need to do that. Uh, uh, Loki says, oh, okay, sounds good. Uh, I don't know if he's saying it sounds good because I, I won't turn off busy or if it sounds good because I I don't have that taunt thing. I think he, he means because I, I won't turn off busy. Uh, so then Oddworld 3, no there's really no reason to play Oddworld 3 right now because Oddworld 2's remake is about to get released and that's why I tried to play the game in the first place. So Oddworld Soulstorm is the remake or it seems like it's going to be the remake of the second game. And so you'd want to play that remake, then you'd want to play 3, which isn't a 2D platform at all. It's a 3D platformer, and it changes the way you play the game quite diff quite a lot. Uh, so it's weird in itself because of that. Uh, and then Oddworld 4, Stranger's Wrath is the subtitle on that one. You play as a completely different character. The, the previous characters aren't even involved. And there's a first person shooter. So the first two games are 2D platformers and unplayable. The third game is a 3D platform and is playable but looks kind of dated. Uh, the fourth game is a first person shooter. The remake of the first game isn't worth playing. And so I didn't ever even buy it because it's got so many bugs. Uh, the sequel to the remake is about to get announced, but if you can't play the remake of the first game, would you really want to play the remake of the second game alone? Uh, so it just gets down to the point of Oddworld, uh, Oddworld being this huge mess of a series, and I never played it, and I don't have that nostalgia because it was a PlayStation game. But I really wanted to get into it, even though it is a very weird looking game. And there's just no easy thing there. And so, at the end of the day, trying to play all these games and spotlighting all of them, I just had to say, you know what, they should stop with the Oddworld series, and they should just make a new series of games. 
take take what they've learned, move forward. You can't stop making remakes. You're not doing a good job of it. Uh, stop trying to sell the old thing. Just do something that's more relatable. Uh, the other things I played, I played Reigns and was very disappointed in that game. That's a card game where you swipe left, swipe right to kind of like Tinder to make decisions. And that's all you do in this kind of a cell phone game where it's, the idea certainly plays itself well as the cell phone uh, version of games. But, but at the end of the day, Reigns really suffers from not having a like linear storyline that you have to see so you may play hours and hours of the game and not unlock everything and I didn't unlock the things you needed to do to get the good ending and after you sit a, hit a certain, certain point you just have to start over from the beginning again and play the same boring events over and over again with the same boring two responses either you swipe left and you get one response or you swipe right and you get another response and you, it doesn't even really randomize the responses much at all uh, Loki responded by the way saying yes that which again not to nitpick is, is not as descriptive as I would like to know because the delay he, he could be saying yes that to one thing or the other uh, but I think I've I've got the message. Uh, and so after I played Reigns, I played a, a spotlighted a game called My Name is Mayo, which is a clicker game, but not really a clicker game because you can do all the achievements in less than two hours. In fact, you can play the entire game in less than two hours. And if you wanted to nefariously do that and then get a refund for the 99 cents or so you'd spend on it, uh, you could get away with that almost certainly but uh the thing about my name is mayo is that you click on a jar of mayonnaise trying to open the jar and as you're clicking on the mayonnaise a story evolves and it tells you a few lines of dialogue after every 50 clicks or so and it's very linear very well thought out not perfectly thought out because the it starts uh it starts with the mayonnaise telling speaking from a female voice and and talking about dressing up to be sexy and it kind of that's an interesting reveal as you see this jar of mayonnaise and a bikini pretty quickly in the game and then it goes to like a childhood story and then it goes to like a father telling talking about life story and then it goes to a a male perspective so then the jar of mayonnaise turns into a male character talking about trying to date a girl and and it's 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 not greatly consistent there and i'm i'm spoiling the little bit of story there but uh, it was very linear every time you clicked you were working towards the next piece of story and no randomization nothing like that and so it, it was a good contrast and a good reason to show off a silly game uh yeah, Loki is saying he's still getting used to the delay. Yeah, it, it's probably about 30 seconds, I would guess, uh, even with it. My internet's not the greatest. Uh, that's going to be it for this stream and this recording. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it, Loki. We, we played about three games, and that's kind of all I want to do it. I need to get on to playing Bioshock Infinite and try to get ahead on my videos last thing I want to do is fall behind even more as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend to follow me on basically any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below thanks for playing me Loki in particular and thank everyone else for watching but have a good evening bye <laughs>